by your gift. And somebody say, but it's not working for me. Well, first of all, have you given? <laughs> Second of all, how are you giving? What's your strategy about giving? Let me go. Again, she said, Luke 6 and 38. Luke, dot the Luke, 6 and 38. It reads like this. Out of the living Bible, she read, it says, For if you give, you will get. May I add, if you give in faith. All right? Some people just give. Like, oh, just throw it out. Just say, no, no, no. Taking a chance. Okay, no, you're not gambling here. Okay, look. You, God said that just shall live by his faith. So give in faith. What does that mean? I'm expecting. Lord, your word says, if I give trust in you, then I'm going to return. So with all of my heart, you said I am to love the Lord God with all of my heart, all of my mind, all of my soul, all of my might, all of my strength, and to love my neighbor as myself, you know, okay. Let's do it God's way, all right? It's sort of like a success formula, if you will. It's really a success formula. In fact, Joshua put it this way. In Joshua 1 and 8, he said, uh, let, me, let me read there. I'll go to, directly to the scriptures, you know. Joshua 1 and 8 goes like this. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. What are you saying? <laughs> it shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, it is then that thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It's the word of God. Now, Satan, Satan will con you. He'll tell you, oh, no, you got to go here, and you got to do this, you got to do it God's way. Put him first. He'll tell you what to do. He will guide you, but you got to meditate on that word so you will know what to do. If you had to meditate on the word, you ain't going to know what to do. You won't know what to do, okay? As I told you so many times before, uh, I remember I had some sausage bacon for breakfast. But that was a few days ago. And I sat there and think about that. That's not going to fill me. i got to go back and eat the sausage bacon in order to get filled, all right? So then we got to go to the Word. Open it up. Read it. Read it, all right? <laughs> Amen. Okay, all right. So my need, your need is met by your giving. My need is met by my giving. Amen? All right. He says here, again, let me finish this off, um, uh, the Living Bible again out of Luke 6 and 38. For if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you in full and overflowing measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, <laughs> and running over. Whatever measure you meet, you will give, or whatever, excuse me, whatever measure you use to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. So think about it. It was a little thumble full. You gave a little thumble full. You know a little thumble full you ladies know about sewing these have a little thumble. You a little thumble full? Well, you get back a thumble full, it just be running over. Okay? Well, if you give a big basket, all right, that basket, you'll be given back. It'll be running over. It's more than what you gave, all right? Well, it was a great big old dump truck. <laughs> all right? So you be a whole lot more coming back than what you would give that's the way God's work. That's what his word says. And you got to believe his word. You can't go by what you feel, what you see in the natural. But you got to go by what the word of God say. And that is what you call faith. We're going to trust him. Amen. That's how I live. I'm still learning. But that is how I live. Right. The Apostle Paul, that she was saying, and my wife was saying here, the Apostle Paul says, and again, out of the living Bible, I'm giving this, okay. He says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. You know, we kind of been that way too. I know what it's like, man. We had nothing, man. I mean, my goodness, I had potatoes in the garden, and, and, and that was it. When them potatoes run out, man, and God began to tell my wife what to do. He said, take potatoes and says, get some cheese. Well, somehow or another, we found enough of money to get some cheese. Miraculously. 
probably Sister Scales or somebody gave us some, uh, a couple of dollars. Go get some cheese. And she put cheese in there. And oh, my Lord, it was like manna from heaven. See, we were hungry, all right? And we, we didn't know what we were going to eat from day to day. But we were learning. To, I learned through that process. My flesh didn't like it. But I learned, you know, how to uh, live on nothing, <laughs> almost nothing, or when I had more than enough. In other words, point is I'm content. I learned to be content. So when I'm up, I'm the same. When I'm down, I'm the same. Most people don't know. They say, they going through something. Most of the time, they don't, you won't know it. I'm the same. I've learned how, okay? All right. And so he, Pastor Paul says, whether it's a full stomach or whether I'm hungry, plenty or won't, for I can do everything God asks me uh, to with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and the power. But even so, you have done right in helping me in my present difficulty. Now, in the course of the church in the Philippians, they have given him, as my wife was saying, that after when he come from, uh, met the, uh, from Macedonia, he says that the church, Philippi, the church in Philippi is the only church that communicated with him. What do you mean by communicating? By giving. When he gave, you were communicated. And when he communicated them through their giving, he said they were the only church that gave and communicated with him. And you know what Paul said that? Y'all, this same word applies to you and I today. The same word, nothing, God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, now, now my God, Paul said, my God shall supply all, not some, not part, but all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus is the anointed. Because of that anointing that's in your life, you've been born again, okay, and you have given in faith, trust in God. That's the way it works. Somebody say, oh, when, when my ship come in, I'm going to give. Well, your ship probably won't come in because that's not the way God works. That's the way the world works. The way God is, the just shall live by his faith. He must live by trusting God. And what God said in his word, you stand. Heaven done all stand. I mean, to your own hurt. You just think, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might go on the old bills. They might come and repossess my car, repossess my You stand to your own hurt. Just stand. And you will see the hand of God come through for you. It's just a test. It's just a test. I am so happy today. I got joy. The things that I went through, it was rough. Oh, I shed tears, yes. But I learned, as the Apostle Paul said, I learned how to be full and empty. And still trusting God. Still looking at him. He is my source, y'all. He is my source. So meditate on his word. As Joshua said, that's that success formula I talk about. Okay? Le uh, meditate on his word again. Man, let, let me go back again. Let me read that again. Uh, Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. I told you this is the success formula now. It is the word of God. What's in your mouth? What are you saying? If you're going to go to the soap operas, you can go to HBO, Showtime, and you're going to feed on that every time that television come on, and then all of a sudden you're going to be talking like they talk. Because, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in you in abundance? Take the Word of God and feed on it. He said, Thou shalt meditate therein in the Word of God night and day. Night. That day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It's a good success formula. So your need is met by your giving. So you find out, we, we find out, and we are learning the success to this thing is not going out here and doing this and doing that. I'm not against a school. Don't misunderstand. You need school. Get school, all right? <laughs> Get rounded out. Go get education, okay? But come to Jesus. Ask him. Ask him. What do I do here? What do I do there? Lord, guide me. Give me your wisdom. Help me. He said wisdom is the principal thing. Show me. Teach me and help me. He will. But when you come, you've got to come believe in him and expect him. Expect him to show you. Expect him to guide you. And wait on him. My wife comes to me and she says, you know, will you uh, uh, will you go to the store and, and get me some some green beans and some corn and some bread and, and, and why she talking to me and then 
that I turn around and walk off, or, or, or she, she turn around and walk off and don't realize what I'm going to say, or whatever, you know. That's not going to, it's not going to, not get communication there. The point is, when we go to God, ask Him, now wait. Listen to Him. Listen to Him. Get quiet. Get still before Him. Lord, help me. Show me. You might say, well, I ain't heard nothing. Just be quiet. Shh, shh. Just be quiet. You might not hear nothing audibly. Probably won't. Audibly. But in your reborn spirit, He will guide you in all truth. He's in your reborn spirit. All of a sudden, you might get this. Well, look like I just got a desire to not go to that grocery store, but to go to this grocery store over here. Listen to him. Do what he tell you to do. You might go to that grocery store. You don't know. You don't. You're the next one in line. You are our one million customer, so everything you got today is free. You don't know how. <laughs> I'm just using that again, you know. Trust the Lord. I mean, that's 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 carnal. That's good. But God will supply. He will supply. It's not no. He might. He maybe he will. I, I just don't know about. No, no, no. This Paul says, my God shall supply all, not some, not part, but all of your need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Even concerning this COVID nineteen, in the name of Jesus, that thing is dying. It's dying in the name. It's dying here. Can you come here in the name of Jesus? This thing will die. It will not touch you. But now, you can't just do that unless you heard from God. Okay? Well, we're just going to have church because God's going to kill it. Did he tell you that? Are you walking in your flesh? You better wait and be led of him. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, to them he have given the power, the authority to become Sons of God. Amen? I hope you're getting something here. <clears throat> anyway. Your need is met by your giving. All right? Again, don't blame God. <laughs> what have you given? You got, Lord, you just won't get. What, did you do what he told you to do? Did he do what you told you to do? <laughs> okay? Because he's talking all the time. Okay? My wife is speaking about how that God has instructed us to, to become partners with, uh, you know, two or three different uh, uh, ministries and, and, and so on, okay? Now, your flesh in the beginning, that thing is like, Lord, you feel like it's a loss. Lord, if I get, we, we ain't even got enough. He knows. He knows, all right? I remember going to God concerning uh, the situations I was going through financially, just, Lord, not having enough, just all the time, just tired and going. And I sought him with all of my heart. And he said, if you seek him with all your heart, he will be found of you. And I went to him and he, and and he asked me a question. Oh, yeah, he talked to me. He says, shouldn't you give $1 for every five that you make? And my flesh went like, oh, whoop. Oh, I, I didn't want to. I'm just being honest. But I know that was the word of God that he told me, okay? I'm not telling what he told you. He said, one. I said, Lord, that's 20%. My Lord. 20%. I said, Lord, that. You feel like it's a loss. Boy, when after about two years of battling with this thing, and I saw it wasn't getting no better, and it got worse and worse and worse and worse. I said, God! And every time I go to pray to him, all I can hear him is saying is, shouldn't you give one dollar for every five? He done told me what to do. The success formula was speaking to me. So I says, okay, Lord, I'm going to obey you. And I had, first of all, repent. And I repented. And I said, Lord, I, I've not done what you instructed me to do. I was wrong. And I said, now I'm going to come to you and I'm going to obey. So I did. And when I did, you know, at that time now, you're going to be proven, be tested. But things begin to change. Wow. Things begin. It's like, wow, this way is better. But you know, you gonna have to, you have to trust him. If he said something in his word, Jesus said this. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie. <laughs> Neither the son of man that I should repent. If I told you... It's, it's a sure thing, but you're going to have to trust him. What we're going to have to learn to develop is patience. Everybody say patience. patience. There's that long suffering. You know, long suffering is patience. It's like, oh, Lord, but I, I just, shh. and you squabble and you might cry and carry on in the beginning. But after a while, after time go by, that little screaming and hollering, your flesh begin to die. Get quieter, quieter, 
All right, now this, your, your, your spirit man began. You begin to, oh, okay, I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Yeah. Then when that time comes, and whether you're full or whether you're empty, guess what? You can maintain. You're content in whatsoever situation that you're in. Amen? Okay. So, as, she, as I was getting uh, uh, speaking about, as she was saying that, my wife was saying that when the Lord spoke and told her to be partnered with various ones there, well, you got to listen to God. L listen, do partner with whom he tell you to partner with. Don't just throw it out there. Don't just throw your seed out, but put it in good ground. Go do what he told you to do. And we partner with them, and then we begin to sow seeds, and all of a sudden, then look. And I didn't know, but I, like she said, we felt like we wasn't doing enough. You know, we, we, we don't have no, no place to where we feed people the hungry, God. Uh, what, what do we do? I know, but doing things he told us to do now, when they feed the hunger, when they're a soul to save, whether overseas or whether here in the United States or wherever they go, every time that, that, that person, that soul is worn to Christ or whatever, it's accredited to my account. It's accredited to your account. Because we come to him in faith and done what he said. That's a pretty good deal, don't you think? Lord, I took, you know, 10% out of this ministry or whatever that he told you to give, and we give to that. It feels like to your flesh it's a loss. But I'm telling you, be by faith. You, you can't go by what you feel and see because you'll never get there. You'll never do it. But you got to trust him. Trust him. Amen? Okay? So, in, in the, so now it's like, wow. So every time... So we'll get saved. We're like, wow, that's a credit to my account. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. Amen. All right. We stand before God, Almighty God. And it's like, wow, you'll find out rewards and things like, Lord, I, how did I get this? Obedience. Obedience. Yeah. To obey is better than to sacrifice. Okay. All right. All right. So just do what God tells you to do. Okay. Uh, it, it, like I said, Make sure that you are obeying God. Because my God, yes, he's supplying my need, all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He will do that. But you got to operate in faith. The just shall live by his faith. Amen? Live by Live. Live. Every day. Live by faith. <laughs> people say, people want to store up for themselves. Nothing wrong with storing up. in the midst of them, But again, being led of God. Putting him first. Putting him first, okay? You store it up. And somebody say, well, I'm just saving for a rainy day. Well, you will certainly have one. It's coming. <laughs> you will have one. Do what the Lord says. My storing up is when he told me, now to you give here. You do this. You obey me. And when I start doing obey me, all of a sudden it's like, this COVID-19 is really, God, I don't even see no effect financially. Now, I'm not rich by no means, Okay. But trust in God and keep standing with him. I expect to increase. Doing it his way and obey. And he's supplying us to where we have to meet other people's needs. To get the word of God out. To where it helps them. Get somebody get some understanding. They'll know the will of God in the matter. Okay. Amen. God is able. My need is met by my giving. Amen. My need is met by my giving. Your need is met by your giving. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Well, it's... It, my, my need is just not being met. Well, go back and check it out. Hey, get that checkbook. Pull it out and look and see. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Wow. That's a, whoops. I gave two times for the year. Well, anyway. <laughs> That's about the point. All right. Praise God. He will supply. It's good to know that God will supply all my needs. All your, it's good to know. So, so regardless of what comes. Regardless of what, you know, the government, they send, oh, the stimulus check. Everybody waiting on the stimulus check. Yeah, I like it too. Praise God about the stimulus check. But Jesus is my stimulus in him. I move and have my being. And I will be taken care of. I believe that, that I will be taken care of. You know, and everything may not go the way I want, the way I thought it would go. But nevertheless, my God will supply all of my needs, all of it, all of it. Amen. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Let's go. Uh, all right. Let me. Let me. We, we're gonna close out here. Okay. We ain't gonna waste all of your time here. But here again, let me go and, and touch bases on this. Uh, in in Romans ten and nine. Let's say there's somebody that that you know. Again, you may not know Jesus or who he is or. 
and you would like to know this God. Oh, and uh, he's here all the time. He's here. So Romans 10th chapter and verse 9. Again, let me go directly to the word so you know it's not my word, the word of God. He says here that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Just in short, just confession with your mouth. What are you confessing? Oh, I'll never be saved. Oh, I'll never amount to anything. You can have what you say, but if I were you, I would change my confession. Okay? I'm busted, broken, sick. Well, and you're wondering, why are you busted, broken, and sick? Mm. You've been saying this for how long? And you're how old? Well, I mean, uh, God know I didn't mean that. He didn't, but you can have what you say, all right? You're busted, you're broken, you're sick. And you look at it, you can't find out why in the world is it that way. What have you been saying? We are snared by the words of our mouth, okay? Watch what you say, okay? So confess with your mouth. Confess, he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that is that Jesus is Lord. Let him be Lord of your life. Confess it with your mouth. I believe that God. And he said, and to believe it in your heart, thou shall be saved. And believe that, it, that God had raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shall be saved. I believe that. It's not, it's not hard. Just believe it and receive it. And you might say, but I didn't feel nothing. The just shall live by his faith, not feelings. Now feelings will come. Thank God for the feelings. But if you don't get into goosebumps, okay, and if you don't get no, woo, no glory balls, like, oh, and look, his word is true. He said it. You confess it with your mouth. You believe it in your heart, not your blood pump, but your spirit. Just, Lord, I believe that. You might say, well, Lord, help my unbelief, but I believe that. God says, thou shall be saved, amen. You shall be saved. That's it. That's what you want. Then then you're on your way to a better road in life. Amen. Okay. Now you're going to have oppositions out there to meet you. That's Satan. He's busy seeking we, so, whom he made the vow. But resist him steadfast in the word. Submit yourself to God. Resist him and he will flee. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um,